the reason why I say men are responsible for everything is because we are in the leadership role. Um, and this is, this is a responsibility that God put on men, simple and plain. And if men behave in the right way, since we are leaders, what will happen is women will follow since they are followers. It's very simple. All men need to do is behave. We have a responsibility to behave morally. Welcome once again, folks, to another edition of the Conversational Bible Chats. And you've got your boy, Jimothy Masters, back again to discuss a rather interesting topic. I do apologize for having not uploaded a video for quite a few days. I was ill over here in Sydney. We've had a bout of the flu, but like a trooper, I've managed to recover. Now, whilst I was ill, I was keeping tabs on some of the discussions that were being uh, debated on the internet, especially YouTube. And I came across a rather interesting conversation between Andrew Wilson of The Crucible and a guy called Octavia. He is a YouTuber in London. And they had a debate as to whether or not it was men's responsibility and men were the reason why um, women were behaving badly. This has sparked, as you can imagine, quite a debate on the internet, especially amongst key YouTubers, namely Fresh and Fit, uh, Michael Sartain, the Red Pillars, and of course, the Feminists. So what I decided to do is to grab hold of as many different clips of women give it their view on promiscuity and their autonomy, and whether or not it is true that if men took a heavier proactive stance towards women's behavior, it would change anything. Of course, this in itself um, presumes that women actually listen to men. And it also presumes, of course, that men aren't at this moment in time saying anything or doing anything substantial to push back against uh, women's current behavior. Now, rather than me going ahead and giving my viewpoint, what I decided to do, as I said before, was pull off some clips from YouTube and let you decide. Now, I'm gonna give some commentary just to aid your understanding of what's been discussed, but I'm sure you're gonna find some of the discussions rather interesting. I will say one thing, the subject matter is far more complex than Octavia would have us believe. But hey, I'm gonna let you decide. That's a responsibility that we have as men. And if we if we do that, women will follow. Can you give me um, an example in society where that's true? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Um, this this you know, um, women controlling access to sex. This idea only came about after the 1970s. After the no, it didn't. For nope. for almost all throughout human history, men have always controlled female promiscuity. Then why do you have twice as many female ancestors, sir? Hold on a second, I'm almost finished. So who really controls access to sex? Women. It is men. And it's all women. men have to do is just is just conduct themselves morally in society, oh, okay. show some responsibility, and guess what will happen? Women will follow. So as you can see, Octavia is div is digging his heels in, and and decide that this is the hill that he's willing to die on. Now, if you understand the premise of, of his argument, he's saying that it's men who control the access to sex. I, I can tell you that in my life, I can decide to sleep with as many different women as possible but ultimately unless a woman is forced she can say yay or nay so then the question is in that situation who is controlling when sex occurs again you know i'd rather leave you to have a look at these next few clips and decide for yourself. As a, the man sitting at this table, are you attracted to their lifestyles? Do you think men are attracted to their lifestyles? Uh, I'm just curious about your opinion, just to hear a, a male. I don't care. Okay, so this is the Whatever podcast. Candace Owens wants to ask the only man in the panel in this discussion what his thoughts are on OnlyFans women or women with uh, who have got a high body count and wants to know what does a man think about this and lo and behold the first thing the lady in orange says the young lady there believes she's actually a pornographer this woman 
um, admits to uh, working, she's a sex worker, and this woman admits to having as many as um, 10 clients per night. And, and I believe she's, she's only about 22. But does she care what, uh, what Brian Atlas says? Apparently not. So we, we go back to the clip to find out how this discussion pans out. Well, that's so rude. No, he sat I mean, asked you your opinion about no, everything. No, I said, like, good thing I don't care for but what an other male has to say about my industry, though. But I'm he's just been saying. asking you questions about what you think about men. No, I'm going to listen to him. He's been asking you questions about your life. And the first thing when no, I ask one he question can to say him, his you I'm say, I don't like, care. I just feel personally, like that's... I'm very hurt. I mean, I personally would not date a woman who is involved in sex work in any of its various manifestations. Yeah, and I said I don't care because it's like... And you're like, no, don't take offense, like... I'm not going to take offense to something I don't care about. That so what's interesting here is Brian Atlas, he's what you might consider to be um, a high value man. He's got a podcast that is doing exceptionally well. He is obviously uh, very, very wealthy from the uh, podcast. It's got, you know, well over, I think at this moment in time, it's got well over 4 million subscribers. And as a man who hosts discussions, with women from all over the world regarding um, his thoughts on promiscuity, his thoughts on, on intersexual dynamics, the women in this panel, namely this woman here, simply doesn't care. Okay, so no amount of pushback. And even this the thought that, well, he wouldn't choose ever to date a woman who's ever been involved in sex work or is highly promiscuous, she makes it quite clear. She doesn't care. So going back to Oct 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 Octavio, his understanding or his belief is that, well, men simply have to just dig our heels in and, and let these women know that we will have nothing to do with them and that that should do everything to change their, their mind. Well, is that true? Let's go back to the clip. And you stated, you were like, and, and you looked at me and you said, and don't take offense, like, baby, I'm not offended by any means. I am not knocking it at all. I just tell people what the facts are. You can choose this lifestyle, and here is where you are 99.9% .9 likely to lead in, in your life, right? You are probably not destined for marriage. You're not probably not destined for a stable relationship. Men are going to not want this long term. You can say it a thousand times. You can have a thousand cultural examples, and women's still got to go out there and be hoes, you know, because they're about their money and about a cardio. What Candace Owens says there is absolutely crucial, especially as it pertains to this current generation of women. They simply don't care what a man thinks with regards to promiscuity and sex work, because, you know, in their defense, they're able to be independent, they're able to get their bag, in other words, to earn huge sums of money. I mean, these women are practically the new age entrepreneurs. I mean, some of these girls, basically, especially we're going to hear from the uh, OnlyFans lawyer who commands, get this, six figures, six figure income per month. So with that in mind then, why would they listen to their male counterparts who earn maybe as much as what three times less than they do so again going back to Octavio's argument how is it possible then or how easy is it going to be then for men to just simply say to this women to these women you know um, stop what you're doing otherwise quite frankly you're not going to stand a chance with the man that you want in the future simply I mean, these women in their defense, they're going to look at that and think, well, in the short term, what's more important? Let's earn as much money as possible because, hey, we can dictate what we want to dictate about our lives in the future. The question is, is that reality? Are there key elements of their presumption missing some crucial facts? Let us see. We'll move on. If women got into stripping, Is it shameful? It, they will figure it out and they will see that there's resources that they can make a successful living at it. Is it shameful? If they don't, if you feel like no, it's I'm shameful. You. Is it shameful? No, I think if you are stripping, in this. Is prostitution shameful? 
Prostitution is a whole other thing. No, that's what you're doing is prostitution. No, prostitution. The lies. Actually, that's the sad thing. prostitution, you're, you're, you're saying OnlyFans is prostitution? Yes. So here we have it, guys. We've got another clip that features Margaret Devon, uh, Rolo Tomasi on the far right. Uh, I believe this, this is actually a fresh and fit um, debate, but held on the Michael Sartain podcast. And this was an interesting back and forth between Marquette and a group of sex, sex workers. Now, the interesting thing here is that their understanding uh, with regards to the sex workers, the understanding is that sex work isn't shameful. So going back to Octavio's argument that men need to step forward and push back and if you like, you know, have they been pushing back? Well, in this instance, Marquette is coming out against the narrative to say that this is shameful. Now, you've got to understand that in this day and age, we are not to shame anybody. We are not to judge anyone, apparently. But Marquette Devon is taking the bold step to point out that in the first instance, sex work is shameful. But notice how that if you remove shame from the, the discourse, then, of course, you also remove another barrier as to why women should stop promiscuity or promiscuous practices. Without any further ado, let's return to the clip. You're accepting I money can, for I'll pull sexual up the service. For you. You can yes, go that's ahead. Right. It's prostitution. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Thank you. So, so you if just this conceded is digital that it is prostitution. prostitution. Guess what? We're living in an age where women are living in a society where they can do this and they don't have to be at risk of getting uh, STDs. diseases, STIs, that's whatever. That's not the conversation. The conversation no, 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 is, is no. it we shameful? We want to talk about, we want to. Is it shameful? It's not shameful if you feel like it's shameful. Morally when questionable. I don't know about it. You better be about it. Everyone has a different way of doing it. Everyone has a different and, value uh, set. And and what, he's speaking in you. generality. Yeah. Is it shameful no. for women to be involved in that? What no. God condemns. Morally questionable. You guys said no? No. Do you live on planet Earth? In this industry, just like selling drugs, you shouldn't do it. I think that what we have to acknowledge is that the women who can pretty much only do that are going to do it, and it, it's fine. I just don't want everyday decent women to be flooding into this chasing after money because they're not going to get what they're seeking. I think he's if saying, like, women, setting up the average right, woman ladies, up for success. Up for OnlyFans. I think what he's saying don't is I think a lot of the women in this industry give a false or delusional experience it's to the average woman that might be curious about Absolutely. getting into it instead of giving the good, the bad, and the ugly, I as mean, he yeah. said earlier. Like, like, straight up. Again, guys, I just want you to notice that far from dealing with the issue of promiscuity, these ladies are at a point where, as far as they're concerned, the narrative here should be about whether or not there is real money to be earned. So we've moved away from is pornography on the internet damaging to women or damaging to society? No, oh, no, no, no. We've moved away from that. The discussion should be are they going to earn as much money as, say, for example, the women who are at the top, the women who are being paraded in the media as earning the bag, as earning the... In other words, these women... Uh, the kind of money that these women earn, is it fair to promote to the wider community that you can actually earn this kind of money? And one of the reasons why, again, <laughs> we're sort of muddying the waters here, but one of the reasons why this, this, for them this discussion is important is because you have got, now got teachers leaving the teaching profession to actively move into sex work, okay? You have got lawyers leaving the profession to move into to OnlyFans. And there's a clip coming up uh, very, very shortly where we're going to have a look at that in earnest. So again, remember the premise of this video is should men simply just put our foot down and say we outlaw this kind of behavior, we make it clear that we shame this behavior and that should be enough 
for women to just simply give up this harmful, destructive behavior and return to a more traditional way of life. Is that true? Is that practical? Is that what's really going on? Again, I'm gonna leave it to you to decide. Very successful. This is pretty girl. simple, right? You have kids, right? Yes. Daughter or son? Daughter. Would you want her to do sex work? Absolutely not. So oh, it God. is. Have, no, no, no. Look. So it is shame. Kick me out. Kick me out. No, and what I am doing, doing, no, what I am doing I do Crazy. this yeah. so that my daughter doesn't, doesn't have, have to, do to do this. Understandable. But let's just say, generally speaking, most women they shouldn't do this, right? Correct. So again, here the the belief is, and here we've got Fresh and uh, Myron from Fresh and Fit, and. The discussion here has moved on to a woman's right to earn money to cover her bills and look after her loved ones. And sex work being the means by, by which she has chosen to be able to do it. It's the means by which she can do it and do it very, very well and do it legally, okay? So again, can you simply now in, in this juncture, is it that simple then to be able to say, well, all you have to do are you, are you going to tell this woman, stop earning money for your family? Stop, you know, putting a roof, stop earning money to put a roof over your head or, or choose an occupation where you're going to earn considerably less money, even though you will at least retain your self-respect. You won't, you know, be using your body in, in an immoral way, but you're probably going to be struggling financially again you know th th there is a nuance to this discussion that i believe maybe octavia hasn't taken into consideration here but we move on so he is correct genuinely so so look, listen, has it is it is, it is work but he's just saying there's alternate things you can do that do create money for yourself and your family as well yeah i don't That's think the women understand moral. his argument his argument yeah. was simply that it is an easier job yeah. than others and on top of that it is shameful from a societal perspective Correct. yeah societal, so yes yeah so and and guess what we live in a society this is why <laughs> right. you asked the question earlier uh 2.5 million if you can make it doing only fans etc here's the thing am i willing to forego future happiness for temporary pleasure now and i don't think women understand that if you go ahead and you make that money and you become successful so as you make 2.5 million doing that you're gonna have to get some level of renown which means fame mm. which means people know who the fuck you that are part. which means no one will take you seriously that's a guy that actually has a name to him he's not gonna and if i'm willing to forego a family a relationship having people uh respect me as a dutiful woman if I'm going to forego that, cool, I'll go make that money. But what women need to understand is if you make that choice, you go down that road and you go into sex work, especially if you become famous, there's Huge. significant consequences, consequences yes. that will fuck you up. And here's the thing. You guys don't derive the same level of pleasure from success and financial success like we do mm -hmm. and status. I like money. Okay. Let's make it clear. So My Myron has very eloquently made a very good case for why it is merely just thinking about the money. In other words, short-term gratification, short-term fame and glory, which could set you up for long-term, well, which could set you up in the long term for rejection by the man that you say that you want. And notice the looks on the women's faces is one of just, well, nonchalance. They simply don't care. And the reason why they don't care is because for them, the future looks like a future where they're independent and in control of their lives, even if it means being single. But the argument there, for those who know this channel, for those who know the work that I've done and my previous channel, is this. They're making an assumption that the economic landscape will be one that will enable them to thrive. They're also making an assumption that in the long run, there is gonna be a strong economy. What happens if there isn't a strong economy? What happens, say for example, uh, with the number of women going into sex work goes up to a point where the number of women deciding to become wives and mothers 
drops dramatically. We're seeing countries like South Korea having a replacement level so low that I believe from last year from a population of I think it was 50 million, they only had 280,000 births, simply not enough to sustain their population, which means they have an aging population. An aging population means that you, that the elderly then become a financial burden on the youth. And in order to make up the financial deficit, the government will have to raise taxes. In other words, they're going to take your money. So if you're one of these women, I can imagine in the future, who you're now in your 60s and 70s, you have no kids, you didn't contribute any children who to be able to you know, look after you in your old age, they're simply going to take your money from you. And there's going to be a social um, backlash against you as well. I can imagine that will happen. They will take, the government will simply take your money. You see, these are the things that women aren't thinking about. But is that enough for women to say, maybe we need to pull back on promiscuity. Maybe we need to pull back on this short-term gratification, short-term you know, financial gain. And look at more traditional wives, and look at more traditional lives to become wives and mothers. Really, let's move on. It's our responsibility as leaders Northridge, to Rosita, shame you. Tarzana. We have to shame you because we are the ones who run the society. Oh, yes. I, think, I think that I think that it can no, be. No, and in and, shaming you, in shaming you, I save your daughter. Hold on. In shaming you, I save your daughter. Okay, let's not talk about people's kids. Come on, no. let's leave kids no. out of this. Like, you don't say that's nothing too much. about my no, daughter. It's too much. No, it's a metaphor. Look, 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 no. When I said, in shaming you, I save your daughter, which is to say all of the young girls when they hear that they see the stigma oh the society thinks this is bad they're less likely to go into that and you yourself earlier yeah. said hold on don't interrupt excited, don't interrupt mind you yourself earlier said you do not want your daughter to go into that here's the thing if your daughter listens to you she's likely to go into it because you're promoting it if she listens to me she's not likely to go into it did you notice she's that part probably. again this notion that men are not doing enough or not saying enough here's Margaret Devon you know, stealthily articulating to these women who they're clearly, I mean, look at them, they, they, they're clearly a nonchalant. They, they really don't give a damn. But he makes a really good point, And this is the danger that we're in. He's actually pointing out that the danger for the next generation is unless these women pull back on their behavior, on their mindset, on their attitude of, get the bag at all costs it's very likely that the next generation of women they're going to run at breakneck speed into this level of promiscuity for short-term gain and again you know whilst the the lady in the whilst the lady in the pink there basically says that she doesn't want her daughter doing it she doesn't feel that she should lead by example because again money is more important i mean i've seen examples where an only fans i think it was a british only fans um pornographer when she was asked what effect her work would have on her young sons to everyone's horror she basically said look you know her sons can have you know her sons can be depressed in the back of the their maserati or whatever else i mean absolutely shocking there's also a nonchalance about the damage that it does to young males knowing that their mother is involved openly involved in sex work there's two schools of thought here there's on the one side there's people believe that well you know the damage to men and the social stigma will be such that it, it, well you, you would have men unfortunately self-deleting as a result of finding out what their mother has been doing or the social or the internet throwing back images or videos of their of their mother i mean look those of us out there who are who are traditionally minded simply just cannot fathom that and then the other school of thought is that well by that time it will be normalized anyway and so this notion that they're of shame simply won't be there 
I mean, I think that's taking a risk, but look, you know, time will tell. We move on. If your Depends on the question. If your daughter was watching this podcast and she's listening to what I'm saying about OF, OnlyFans, pornography, prostitution, and she's listening to what you're saying about it, would she be more likely to do OnlyFans listening to you or listening to me? Who would lead her down an OnlyFans path between the two of us? I am her mother. I am somebody <laughs> who has the wisdom in this I understand, industry. But did you hear my question? I would teach her. I would teach her. Let me answer. Let me answer. Just answer the question. I would teach her not to follow <laughs> someone like you. Again, uh -huh. this discussion opens up avenues that, for those of you in your forties onwards who are not privy to the younger generation or the younger mindset and how, especially with regards to women, they have been conditioned to a, a totally different, I almost feel their brains have been rewired such that traditional logic that enabled them to uphold traditional values simply doesn't exist now. Notice the cognitive dissonance for her, rather than acknowledging that there is a shame that will be attached to it, such that her daughter, if hearing from Marquette Devon about how bad this is, would therefore then take the decision not to, to do this, she, the mother, has decided that, well, the logical route would be simply to tell her daughter that people are, like Marquette Devon are harmful. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. So, again, going back to Octavio's stance and argument against Andrew Wilson with regards to whether men can simply just push forward. He doesn't realize the brainwashing and the rewiring of the current generation of women such that they're not wired to be able to just listen to reasoning and then to act accordingly. They're just not, re they're just not wired for that. And I don't. I dare say most of you out there understand this, what what we're dealing with here. Okay, this, we, we simply really don't understand. And the great thing about these discussions, a lot of people say, "Oh well, you know, these red pill discussions are harmful to society. They're harmful to women. They hate women." Oh no, no, no. These discussions are fantastic because what they do is they give us a window to the mindset of thousands of women across different demographics, across different ages, from the you know late teens right the way through to the late 40s, even early 50s. And you can see there is a sea change difference between the mindset of the women in this generation as compared to the mindset of the women 80 years ago. I mean, can you imagine women back in the 40s and 50s listening to these women, seeing the way these women have presented themselves, the argument that these women are using to defend their behavior. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. So again, has Octavia really taken everything into consideration? Are men really in control of the narrative today? Is it really that simple? We move on. The reason why I say men are responsible for everything is because we are in the leadership role. Um, and this is, this is a responsibility that God put on men.